Hello everyone, welcome to TH Media Presents More in the Score. I am your host, Steve Ortman, TH Media Sports Writer, along with fellow sports writer Tim O'Neill. We've been, a, been gone for too long. It's good to be back, and we're here to talk about some prep football playoffs as we enter the postseason, end of the regular season. But before we get to that, here in the office, I am known as a diehard on the pro level New England Patriots fan. We got a big Indianapolis Colts fan here in Tim O'Neill. Tim, I gotta get your perspective. What happened on the big fake punt there that cost the Colts the game? Uh, I'm drawing a brain fart just like the Colts coaches did when they called that Apparently, play. Yes. It just makes no sense at all whatsoever. Uh, really one of the more hilarious plays I've ever seen in the history of NFL football. I think there's only one noise that can appropriately sum it up. But anyway, that's the pro level. So let's move along to prep football. Exciting time in this area. We're looking for postseason play to get underway in Iowa next week. we get got the final week of the regular season here on Friday. Uh, Tim, walk us through the three city schools and what their perspectives are here as the postseason draws near. Well, it's pretty cut and dry as far as what what's going on for the city schools in the playoffs. Seniors already in, no matter what happens in their game Friday night against Clinton. Uh, that game is at Dalzell Field. Hempstead has a little bit of work to do. Um, they played Davenport Central in their season finale at Davenport. Uh, Hempstead is right on the bubble right now for the playoffs. They need to either win that game or lose by seven or fewer points. Uh, so if if Davenport Central wins that game by eight points, Central gets the final playoff berth in that mm -hmm. district and, and Hempstead's on the outside looking in. However, you know, with the convoluted tiebreaker, the, the point differential for your district games comes into play and so you know, if Hempstead can keep it close, even if they lose, they can still get in. Now, Wallert, Wallert uh, got in last week on uh, the strength of uh, its victory over Marion and uh, Solon's victory over Western mm -hmm. Buke and McCocatus' victory over DeWitt Central. So they're in safely. Uh, they're locked into, I believe it's the fourth slot in that district. Um, unfortunately, Western Buke on the outside looking into in that district. Um, and Makokita with a, a second second place finish in that district is going to get a home playoff game. So, so that's kind of where we're looking at in 4A and 3A. Um, Hempstead's the only area team left uh, with a chance to get into the playoffs. That'll depend on Friday night. Um, I know you get uh, you get a look at the the, the smaller schools in our yep. coverage area. Mm -hmm. How's it looking in, in 2A, 1A, and Class A? Sure, uh, and Class 2A, Dyersville Beckman has already clinched a postseason berth as well as Cascade. Both those teams reached the playoffs last year and they'll be going back this year. Beckman made a nice run to the state semifinals, so we'll be interested to see what they can do. And uh, Bellevue, they are on the brink of a postseason berth. If they win on Friday night at Wapalo, they will clinch a spot. Uh, they're tied with North Cedar right now in the district for their final spot. They have the head-to-head tie-breaking win. They beat North Cedar early in the year. So if they win, they clinch the spot, or if North Cedar loses, they also clinch the spot. Uh, Class A, Edgewood Colesburg is already out of contention for a spot. And um, moving on into Illinois, you look at the Illinois playoff picture, Galena made it to the state semifinals last year, and they are a strong contender to make it far again this year, but it's a loaded class, a lot of good teams in the NUIC conference, along with defending champions Forrest. And, and you've got Lena Winslow, the top-ranked team in Class 1A, they're undefeated. So. That's kind of how things lay out there. Now, if we take a look ahead at Wisconsin, they're a week ahead. They actually start the postseason on Friday night. So what are some of the couple of key matchups that stand out in Wisconsin? Well, um, we got a, a bunch of home games in Wisconsin um, in, in Division Division 5, uh, excuse me, Division 6. Um, all four of our area teams are at home. That's Iowa Grant, Darlington, Mineral Point, and Cuba City um, in Division Seven, we then have Cassville and Potosi playing home playoff games. Uh, Platteville, Prairie du Chien, and Lancaster also qualified for the playoffs. Uh, going to be some good, interesting matchups there. There's also going to be some lopsided matchups. Darlington's the one seed. They've been blowing teams up left and right this season. Mm -hmm. I expect that first round game to just kind of be a walkover for the Redbirds the way they've been playing. And then you know, those other small teams in that division, Cuba City, Iowa Graham, and Mineral Point, those were all really good teams this year. And so that division could just turn into being, you know, a small tournament, I guess, just in that kind of regional quadrant. Mm -hmm. Well, it uh, should be an exciting time of year here in the prep football scene as we close out October and enter November. Uh, for Tim O'Neill, I'm Steve Wortman. That wraps things up for this edition of More in the Score, talking about playoffs. Playoffs? Yeah, we're talking playoffs. So uh, for now, that's it for here. Enjoy the postseason, fans.
and hopefully a better fake punt in those playoffs.